it's time to look at the impressive impact of what can be gained from leveraging data in the cross-border payments industry. FXC Intelligence is the industry leader in cross-border payments data and intelligence. Its data platform is used to power critical decisions across the world's biggest banks, payments and big tech companies to shape their day-to-day -day operations, product development and strategy. FXC Intelligence also provides the underlying data for the two main global indices in the sector. The Financial Stability Board G20 Retail Targets and the World Bank Remittances Pricing Index. Plus, FXC Intelligence shares their analysis and insights on a weekly basis with subscribers to their newsletter. It's the most widely read trade publication in the cross-border payments globally. And we're joined now by the company's founder and CEO, Daniel Weber. Daniel, it is great to have you here on the sofa at Cybos TV. I hope you've been enjoying your week in Toronto. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been an absolutely great, great event. Thanks to Swift. Thanks to Cybos. Um, excellent. Thank you. Lovely stuff. Well, let's get into it, shall we? First and foremost, tell us what is FXC Intelligence? As you, as you described, we're the, we're the one company in the space that just tracks data for the cross-border payment space. So the cross-border payment space is a giant space. Any money that moves from one country to another country, any facet of that that we can track, the pricing, the capabilities of what companies have, the speed that a payment happens, how large a market is, who has the biggest market share, any facet around that, that's what we've been, tr been tracking for many years and we're fortunate I work with many of the leading people in the space. So how does the data and insight you offer impact your clients? So it, it, it tends to focus on a lot of the main items that these companies are, are thinking about. So the first one is, is always pricing. In cross-border payments and F FX, how you set your pricing is one of the most fundamental decisions which you have. It's the number one lever that you have to decide how you want to grow or, or make profit. So we have a lot of data and tools around helping people price. Um, there's a lot of work around new product development. Cross-border payments is exceptionally complex. There are many use cases. A use case can be different whether it's serving a consumer, a remittance customer, a small business, a big business, um, an e-commerce player. Um, so thinking about how you launch new products into any of those segments in any kind country around the world. Um, so new product development, new market development, all of those facets are things that help. And then further, we, we help teams that are trying to either sell cross-border payments or buy cross-border payments, how they execute on that. Now, FXC uh, Intelligence most recent product launches are the consumer and B2B market sizing data sets. Yep. Uh, why is data significant and, and what does it say about the current cross-border payments landscape, would you say? So one of the things we, we get asked about a lot is always, how big is it? What's growing? Um, what should I focus on? And many of these global companies, and sometimes even companies that are only op operate in a single country or single, a single corridor, how much of their resource should they put onto, onto one thing? And if you don't know how big the market is, but not just the overall market, down to a very small segment, a single country corridor from the USA to Mexico is one corridor, France to uh, Germany, another cor cor corridor. Even if that's, a, that's only the same currency, it still makes a difference. So trying to understand of all these 40,000 corridors around the world and all these different use cases, what should I focus on? What's my competition get doing? So we found going into very, very granular data on market sizing, that's really helping people prioritize. Mm, are you re releasing any new products? Uh, we, we are, the, the team is exceptionally busy. So I think what we've really been focusing on is getting into the workflows of all these companies. So we've been building out a pricing engine. So any bank or payment company that wants the pricing cross-border payments, that's a big part. Uh, we've been enabling sales teams in some of the largest organizations around the world to have a whole seamless process to go to market, set their proposals, bring our data plus, plus their data, take things that used to take weeks down to a matter of, of hours. Um, and we're also helping the groups that are trying to buy cross-border payment services, which can often be banks, it can be e-commerce players, it can be marketplaces, often it's through an RFP. The offerings are so complicated and so different from these providers in the space. We have a whole new RFP product that is helping people navigate that complexity. Now, the theme of this year's Cybos is collaborative finance in a fragmented world. Of, uh, does S uh, FXC Intelligence have any insights into this, how the payments industry is working together to, to navigate ever-changing technological and regulatory landscape? Well, we certainly think cross-border payments is one of the most fragmented areas in the world because it's broken down by all these single corridors from one country to another country, and it's based on the regulation that exists between each, each country. 
it's so complex, it's very hard for any one individual organization to be able to gain market share and, and to run and control all of it across all the use cases, so nobody does. Mm -hmm. So in the consumer space, there are some companies, some of them are household names that maybe have 10, 12, 15% of the market share. But once you get into biz business payments, you're into single digit market share because the complexities of all the different regulatory requirements, the different use, use use cases, they're so different for each corridor, it's very hard to roll products out that can serve all of them. So I think what we've been seeing is we've been actually seeing companies try to focus on specific use cases and verticals, so rather than trying to say, I can solve everything, they're actually trying to say, let me pick a vertical, maybe it's education, maybe it's online marketplaces, maybe it's international students, maybe it's remittance customers, and, and, and focus on that, which means that it'll remain fragmented for a while because it's one of those spaces that seems virtually impossible to actually own all of it, and there is no player that is even close to that. Let's look ahead to the future. What do you see as uh, you know the biggest developments and changes happening to cross-border payments in the next 10 years? Um, so I, I, I think te technology is helping to improve all, all parts of it. So we're certainly seeing things like AI when it comes to kind of uh, reducing fraud, um, anti-money laundering, all of, all, of, all of those areas, understanding customers better. I think that is, that is going to help. It won't remove all of it, but it will help. Um, I think some of the new blockchain technologies in part might help speed up some parts of cross-border payments. Um, I th you know, the major technology changes which are people moving to mobile phones, these have all kind of happened and that was, that's what's enabled the sector to jump over the last 10 years. I don't think we probably would see the same change we've seen in the last 10 years in the next 10 years. So it's going to be much more in cross-border payments a consolidation journey um, and an evolution of products rather than what it was for the first last 10 years, which was actually a revolution in the products. As we mentioned earlier, FXC Intelligence publishes a, a weekly newsletter that's that's pretty widely it's read, I think it's yes. fair to say. What's, what's the secret to the success of this? What's made it so popular uh, and, and valuable to your subscribers? Um, so we're, we're, we're approaching a few ways. Firstly, I'm fortunate to have a, a phenomenal team Behind that, um, analyst researchers, we have the best data to help support it. We are we are independent, so no nobody can buy into the letter. You can't sponsor it, so we take an independent view, and then we think about it as the considered view once a, a week. So we're not trying to break news. We're actually trying to help people really understand all these nuances that, that we talk through, and we pick an editorial approach. We take three, four topics a week, really dig into it, what we think are the most important topics of, of that week. And so we've just seen the readership very fortunately grow to, you know, what other people say, the most respected, most read trade press in cross-border payments, but we're focused on cross-border payments. There are other areas, they're, mm. they're not for us, but I, I think it's that um, focus on trying to make the complicated sound simple and leverage our data with my great team and that pulls it together. You're going to be moderating a panel later today on uh, uh, opportunities in the SME payment space. Why do you think uh, that this is an area that the industry should be focusing on? So it's very interesting because a lot of innovation has often come from the consumer space in, in cross-border payments. Uh, a lot of the major institutions always focus on their larger clients. So in the middle comes this SME, small and medium sized businesses who sometimes get grouped into consumer and retail products. Some, sometimes they're grouped into dumbed down corporate products, but they are, um, it's an exceptionally large part of the market. Their needs are evolving. It's easier to, to trade cross border as a business than it, than it was many years ago. Um, and they're trying to figure out how to serve a, a, a small and medium-sized business in the cross-border payment space. So fintechs are taking an approach and they're, they're moving very quickly. The banks know they still have a lot of core customers that are SMEs. How should, how should they approach it? So I think if you put those, those, those dynamics together, um, it's, the, it's the one place that is kind of the least well-developed probably in the cross-border payment space. I think that's why we decided to have a panel on this. Daniel, it's been so great to have you here in the Cyboss TV studio. We wish you all the best uh, on your uh, discussion today. Daniel Weber, founder and CEO of FXC Intelligence, thanks so much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you both.